Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad right here, Premier Leather Crafters in the dirty, dirty. The weather kind of broke today. I mean, even though we had a little rain, the rain brought in a little humidity, so it warmed it up a little bit. So we might have been around the upper 50s, low 60s, but it was real pleasant. So I came on out here in the shop and started putting some work in. Just catching up on a lot of stuff when it was just too cold to be out here working. Ran out of kerosene, so we'll have to make some major changes here come next month. But anyway, um, I was sitting here doing a project for one of my customers, and it dawned on me, I have not done a video that's dealing with leather braiding. So, here's the thing, boys and girls. If you want to take a simple way, I won't say it's simple, but because it does require a little bit of work and a lot of time, but if you want to take your work to the next level, learn how to leather braid. And that's what I'm going to get off into is the double X braiding. So let me give you guys a few tools that you will need before you embark on this journey because it is paramount that you have these. And I'm also going to give you a few tips on some things that you will need to know so you don't get frustrated and you don't waste your time and then you don't wind up throwing away a whole bunch of money. So first things first, you will need a multi-chisel punch. I recommend 532. That's what I use. This is one of Tandy's products. Uh, you guys know that I'm a Tandy boy, and this is 88041-08532, craft tool. You guys can see that, craft tool, multi-chisel punch. I also have several other punches too, just in case, depending on the project, depending on the project to where you want to start um, when you have to turn corners. And I'm going to show you a few pieces that I have done. So you'll see exactly how to turn that corner, but you, you can't turn a corner with this multi-chisel punch, this eight head. So now you got to start getting off into your fours, your threes, your twos, and your one. So again, those are some tools that I would recommend that you invest in if you want to get off into double X braiding or triple X braiding. That's only one other braid that looks better, two other, two other braiding techniques that look better than a double X. That's a triple X and the Mexican braid. Oh my God, if you ever see a Mexican braid on a piece, phenomenal. Tandy also have a book that you can get through Tandy and I'm pretty sure you can get them through any of the, uh, your leather craft supply stores where it'll actually teach you that. But I actually want to show you guys because it took me a few times and some of the things that I wanna share with you today is not in that book that you will need to know before you embark on this journey. The another tool you will need is a stitching owl. You will need this stitching owl. This is paramount if you want to get off into braiding. And the third tool you will need is a lacing needle. I recommend that you get the lacing needle with the lock, which I do know Tandy Carry, another Tandy product. Uh, I buy these by the packs of 10 because I do a lot of braiding. Um, so I recommend that you get the ones with the lock. Now, the reason why it has a lock in there, that cutout that you see right there, it's two little pieces of metal uh, like little pricks. So when you put your lace in between these, you can see that. So when you put your lace in between that, those two little ticks when you press that together, it holds the lace in place. This is one of the things that you need. And the fourth tool that you will need is a good old pair of needle nose. And you guys will see exactly uh, where these will come in handy as well. Now, this is not a tool per se, but if you don't have, I'm gonna try to take this camera off without making you guys sick. So I don't want it to rock too much. If you don't have a stitching pony, get you a stitching pony, or you can thumb through my library. There's videos on there to where you can make one of these. I think I spent about seven bucks 
total and I made my own stitching pony. Saves you a lot of money. So, but if you want to go ahead and buy it, you can buy that product from your uh, leather supply store too. Now I got this camera moved in a little bit close because I actually want to see, I want you guys to see how this is going to do. So, and I did do a pre-prep braid because I want you to see the finished product, so don't pay any attention to that. The first thing that you're going to do, you're going to take those two pieces of leather. Well, first, I said I was going to show you guys some projects so you can see what the finish look, look looks like. Um, and so let's do that first. Let me back up real quick. And I'm going to show you these real quick because I want to, I don't want to keep this video long. What can you leather braid, cowboy? Anything. Now, me primarily, I like to do a lot of braiding on smaller projects. Um, let's say minimalist wallets gets a lot of braiding. Biker wallets or trucker wallets or biker wallets. Basically, wallets, period, billfolds, trifolds, they get a lot of braiding. Bible covers in my shop is mandatory for a braid. And this is what I want to show you guys. Uh, let me angle this a little bit. There's nothing else better to me than after you've done some nice carving or tooling work, and then you put that nice braid around that. It just sets the work in the piece apart. And you really don't have to do a whole bunch of stuff because the braiding is the focal point. So when someone sees that, that braiding is just set, sets it off. It sets it off. You can also braid purses. It depends for me. It depends on one what the vision that I have when I'm working on a piece or when I'm putting a piece together, it's the vision that I'm looking at. And if I can see a braid will make it stand out really well, then I will put a braid on there. So now let's get off into the meat and potatoes of this while we at the 10 minute mark. Now, once you have laid down your edge and you've put your two pieces together, I recommend that you glue these two pieces. It actually help it hold, or you can use your clamps to help it hold as well. But I still recommend gluing, contact cementing your two pieces together. One, because if your braid is the only thing that's going to hold these pieces together, I wouldn't want a customer to start to rip, cut, unravel, and then everything that they have in there starts to fall out. So I recommend contact cementing the two, just that edge part. You don't, you don't have to, unless it's a belt or a wallet to where you're gluing the, the pockets and the liner or whatever, then you want to glue that to your, your vest hand. But if it's a purse to where you know it's going to be an opening or a bend, then I would glue just about a quarter down past your chisel punches. Uh, yeah, about maybe 332 or 3 16 below your chisel punch. So that way it'll stay good and tight and it'll give you a good connection with your piece. So like I said, let's get off into the meat and potatoes of this because I don't want to hold you guys long, but I want to give you a starting point to where you can start to do this because braiding is phenomenal. You can add actually an extra 75 to $120 extra for braiding and you can incorporate that into your pricing. That's another reason why I love to do that. Hold on, let me take a sip of this lemonade. Now, here's the thing that's not in the braiding book that you buy. The lace. The lace is one of the most important things. Reason why, if you want your work to look good, and if you put some cheap lace on a project, it's gonna make it look cheap. So, now, I've been lacing for so long, I only use kangaroo lace now. When I first started out, I was using regular leather, leather craft lace, the pro craft lace. Now I use kangaroo. Why, cowboy? What's the thing with kangaroo? One, kangaroo is the fourth strongest hide. Behind elephant, alligator, bison, buffalo, 
kangaroo. If you guys um, uh, have are familiarized with the motorcycle world like I am, um, a lot of motorcycle gear for the real bikers, a lot of motorcycle gear, let me move this camera up a little bit while I'm talking. A lot of your motorcycle gear is made from kangaroo hide. One, kangaroo hide is a biker's best friend. Because if you ever laid down your bike, there's only two types of bikers. One that has laid his bike down and one that hasn't laid his bike down yet. So, but if you lay your bike down, God forbid, want everybody to be safe, practice safe riding. But as a biker who has gone down before, that concrete is not forgiven. And if you are out here just buying some of this one-off cheap leather stuff that's mass produced and really is not real leather, uh, it's another video that I did when I was explaining the genuine leather. Only the part that's stamped genuine leather is real leather. The rest of it is pleather. And if you go down on a bike and you got a pleather outfit on a pleather gear, that concrete, that street is going to eat right through that stuff. And then you're going to have some major road rash. But if you're familiarizing, you know about riding and all of that good stuff like that, you guys know uh, real bikers wear kangaroo gear because kangaroo gear is also the same suits that they use in the motorcycle uh, stock racing when they're out there and they're hitting them curves and and leaning that thing over though their suits are made out of kangaroo hide so if they already know if i'm gonna slide a hundred feet i would still want to have my skin you know and the kangaroo hide protects you now let's get off into that lace kangaroo you have to remember you're braiding if if you think about braiding hair and some of you women may know this when you're traditionally braiding hair, you have to have three strands of hair or three clumps of hair, which calls the weave or the, the where it to be woven. You're crossing one over the other one and you're just going all the way down, which creates the braid. Now, with double legs braiding in the leather world, you're taking one strand and making that same effect. So it's going to appear like it's three strands but it's actually only one. Now, how do we do that, cowboy? And I'm gonna show you guys right now. First, we're gonna get our stitching owl. And I think for some reason that I skipped something. I feel like I skipped something. First thing first, when you're doing two pieces together, uh, and you once you've contact cemented them together, then you chisel punch. Please do not chisel punch each individual piece separately because the importance is, is to make sure that each one of these punches match. And if it doesn't match, then you're going to be trying to waddle around with your stitching owl to try to find the other side. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. That'll make it very hard. It'll also throw your needle off, and then it'll cause your lacing, your braiding, to do some real funny stuff. So you want to make sure that you chisel both these pieces together, punch both of these pieces together. And then once you get it in your stitching hour, you're going to, I, I generally work about, eight to 10 inches at a time. And the importance of your stitching owl is to stretch that hole out and it'll give you an opportunity to pull your lace through. Now, I don't go, uh, now I've been doing them for a while so I can go pretty fast, I can cover eight inches pretty fast. But for you, um, you guys that's just starting out, just go maybe about three, four inches at a time. Now, remember, Key element to leather crafting is time. Time is a leather crafter's best friend because time means more money. Now, so here how we start leather double X braiding. We're gonna get off into the double X braiding. Our very first hole doesn't matter where you start. You're gonna stick that needle in and you want your, your lace to be upside down. So you wanna look at the flesh side not the grain side or not the shiny side of the lace. You want to look at the dull side of the lace. 
and we're going to go into that first hole. And here's another tip that's not in the book. Once you pull your needle through, let the needle go. And you want to pull the lace. The lace. The more stress you put onto your locking mechanism in there, you're taking a chance on breaking your lace and pulling or pulling your locks out of the lace. Then you have to cut that tip off and reset it and start all over again. So once you pull your needle through, grab the lace and pull it through. And you want to use your other hand. Now I'm left-handed, so I work from left to right. Now for those of you who are right-handed, you're gonna be working from right to left, quite naturally. So uh, I hold my index finger and my thumb. Let me move this down so you guys can see how we work in this. I use my index finger and my thumb to make sure that this lace stays flat. To make sure that it stays flat and I pull this through. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this camera because I want you to get a front view of how this is going to work. I think this might be better. So let me give you guys a front view. Here we go. Because I really want you to see this. There we go. All right, so I'm holding this flat. Reset this. Now, I'm going to take this overhang, which is about an inch, and I'm going to fold this over just like that. And I'm going to fold it toward my next hole so it'll be at a slant. So, and I'll show you guys once we get it started. Then I'm going to take my needle flatten my, my lace back out and flip that needle over and I'm going into the second hole and I'm going to pull my needle, then pull the lace and I'm going to snug this up so it'll lay flat. Now, stop right here, show you what's going on. This is your first X. See how I pull this overhang over just a little bit to give it that slant. And then I'm gonna take my needle, take, took my other needle, went into the second hole and crossed over that to create the X. This is the first X. Now, getting started, I want to go back into that same second hole. Again, make sure that my lace is flat. I'm looking at the flesh side. Lay it flat, and I'm coming right back over. Nope, told you wrong. I'm going under the first X. Let me show you this again. See where my needle is? I'm going in between the lace and my project. So my lace is going under the X. The X is over top, over the top of my needle. I wish that you guys can see this from an aerial view or top view. Now, once I go here, I'm going to put my needle behind my loop. You see my loop is in the front. I want my needle to go behind that. And I'm going to pull this straight through there, right up under my lace. Now I'm grabbing my lace and not my needle. And I'm going to snug this up. I want to make sure that that lace stays nice and snug. And it's going to look like this. So let me keep rolling for a couple of holes. And then I'm going to stop and show you guys. Now, once I got up under my lace, once I got up under, ran my needle under my X, I'm going to take that overhang here, take this overhang, and I'm going to lay it flat over the seam of my project. Because... The thing with lacing, I don't want my customer to know where I started and where I stopped. That's the mystery of the double X braid. You don't want a customer to know where you started or where you stopped. So I'm going to take that lace and lay it flat over the seam. And then I'm going to keep right working. Let me see if I can raise this up for you guys so you can see the top aerial part of this. That might be kind of cool right there. Hope this doesn't fall. Okay. 
All right. Now I'm going to come right over the top again and I'm going to go into my third hole right there. Push my needle through, pull it out, grab my lace, pull my lace. Now I'm taking my not pulling hand and grab, making sure that my lace stays flat. That is the key to double X braiding. Another key to double X braiding is to make sure that your lace stays flat. Sometimes it will twist on you. Pull that through, snug it up. Now I'm gonna come right back over the top of that again, and I'm going right up under that second X. Hence, double X braiding. Now on a triple X braiding, you're gonna go into each hole two times, and you're gonna go under your overlaid X three times, which makes that X real tight. So you're gonna see tight X's every uh, two punches, which is beautiful work. Beautiful work if you do it. Taking my, my lace, keeping it flat with my left hand, pulling that lace through, making sure that it stays flat and straight, and I'm gonna snug it up right there. Stretch back out my lace again, making sure that it's flat, go into my next hole, pulling that out, stretching that. Snug it up, cross it over, go right up under my X. So before, remember, before you go to your next hole, go under the X. Pull that through, snug it up, cut, cross it over, go into the next hole, and see how this piece is staying flat on the seam? By going under that, I'm forcing this little tab to be pushed up into my X so the customer can't see it. So I'm gonna pull that through, snug it up. Before I go to my next hole, I'm gonna go under my X. And this flat needle allows you to do that. Great, great invention. Whoever came up with that was real cool. They get the bee's knees for that. Now I'm going into my next hole, making sure that my needle is flat and going straight through there. Pulling that, snug it. Making sure my lace is flat, going under my X. Coming over with another X. Here's that second X going into my next hole. Now, here's the thing. And sometimes you may misjudge it. Whatever project you're working on, your lace is seven times the length. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times the length of the project that you're working on. Now, by just starting out, let me show you, get back up here again. By just starting out, and if you're using a cheaper lace just so you can get used to your form and how it works and how you do it, you're going to have a lot of breakage. This one lace goes into each one of these holes. And it also goes under other leather, uh, your other lace, before you go to the next hole. So this one strand of lace is getting a severe workout. If you're not using kangaroo lace, you, you're going to go through some breakage. It's going to break because every time you pull that through there, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker. That's what's not in the book. Ha ha. But what happens if it breaks, cowboy? Let me show you what happens if it breaks. You're going to come over here, or even if you're going to run out of lace before you finish the product, let me show you guys what's going to happen. And I think that's why I did the other side. What you're going to do, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. You're going to take this needle, and you're going to go down the side, this here, you're gonna go down the side of your lacing that's on the side, not on the top, on the side. And you wanna go down that side that's not seen. So if this is the inside of the wallet or the inside of a purse or the inside of the belt, this is the side I want you to slide that needle down. And I'm gonna go down about four braids. I know I just went down three on this one, but I want to go down four. Now, you guys can see it on this. I went down one, two, three, four. Once you get it under that fourth one, you just bend your project. I'll go down four just to show you. 
Once you go down that fourth one, I'm going to pull this lace all the way through to keep my X on the top. That's why you go down that side. And I'm going to pull that through. See my X? Line, line. Uh, let me grab the stitch now. One X that, that way, right to left, and the other X is this way. So I'm going to keep that X on the top by running that lace down the side. Now I can come back with my scissors, uh, blade, knife, or whatever, and I'm going to clip that. So it's all even. Then I'm going to come right back. And instead of going inside the hole, once you get your new strand of lace out, flatten that out. Instead of going inside the hole, I'm going to come right up under that X. Right up under that X. And I'm going to pull that again. And I'm going to lay this part flat simulating going into the next one but i just want to lay it flat and i'm going to come right over the top of that again with my next going into the next hole bow let me drop that down so you guys can see that i missed that my fault but i'm going to come right back down to the next one and then i'm going to hold this with my thumb give yourself that half inch inch and i'm going to come right over top of that and go right back into the same hole because I want that to lock. This is where your stitching hour comes in hat. Because your stitching hour is going to waddle that out. And you're going to pull that through. Here, check this out. You guys can see that? Bam! There's my X. And I'm going to just keep right on rocking and rolling. Before I go to the next hole, I'm going to take my needle and go back up under that and tighten it up. And everything will stay stacking on top. But you can see how beautiful double X braiding will make your work. Now, check this out. When you pull that apart, that's how it looks. Man, look at that. Look at that. get some light so you guys can see that double x braiding boys and girls makes her work look phenomenal makes your work look phenomenal all right this is the leather cowboy right here premier leather crafts i've kept you guys too long and i gotta get back to work so 27 minutes 50 seconds hey thank you guys for chilling with me as always Leave comments down at the bottom. If you guys have any questions you want me to answer, I will answer them. If I don't know the answer, if you give me a few minutes, I know somebody who does have an answer, probably pretty much I'm going to call my teacher. Or uh, when I uh, started doing the tanning class, and he knows a lot. So if I don't know the answer, I will give you guys an answer. Just leave it in the comment. Don't forget to hit the subscription button at the bottom. And come back and chill with the cowboy anytime, anytime. Or if you want to see me do something for you guys, if you guys have heard about an idea or heard about a certain project or whatever, and you actually want to see me do it, leave that comment down in the bottom. And hey, that video might just be done for you. All right. Hey, this is Leather Cowboy from Real Leather Crafters right here in the Dirty South. See you guys on the other side. Peace.